Hello, my name is Bogdana Nemtsu and this is module number four entitled Social Sustainability. The first lesson deals with definitions of social sustainability. I will start with a few remarks which will be setting the stage for our discussion. Over the last two decades, the concept of sustainable development has emerged as a new development paradigm, combining social, economic and environmental aspects. There is, however, general consensus that the three pillars of sustainability have not been given the same weight by decision makers. You have to know that environmental and economic concerns dominated the sustainability agenda in the late 1970s and 1980s. Social concerns have, have been integrated only starting with the 1990s. In addition to the social dimension, there are authors who discuss about other dimensions of sustainability. This could be the moral dimension, the technical dimension, the legal and the political dimension. It is interesting to acknowledge that these authors talk about the existence of a hierarchy among the proposed dimension. The moral issues rank highest followed by the traditional pillars such as economy, environment and social equity, and final by the technological, legal and political dimension. It is obvious that the integration of these dimensions is needed, however, it is extremely difficult to achieve it in practice. Please examine the short case studies or stories presented on the slides number 4 and number 5. These two short case studies tell you about why it is difficult to realize the integration of various concerns pertaining to sustainability. Along the same lines, which deal with the difficulty of integration, we have authors who argue that there is an inherent conflict among, among the dimensions of sustainable development. It is utopic, one author argues, to think that we can balance these three dimensions. It is easier to think about sus sustainable development as being socially constructed through a process of conflict and negotiation. Please examine on slide number 4 Campbell's Triangle, which talks about this conflict and how difficult it is to balance three conflicting priorities included under the umbrella of sustainable development. When we are talking about sustainable development, we are talking also about values and about how values act as drivers of social change. In a very broad sense, values are sets of priorities adopted by individuals or organizations, consciously or not, based on assumptions and perceptions about reality and life in general. These priorities operate then as motivators for human behavior which follows after these cognitive patterns. The three traditional dimensions of sustainable development can be viewed as a condensed set of values which should guide social change. There are authors who are currently talking about a transition or a shift from the economic perspective towards the ecological perspective. 
In the later perspective, economic values are just a subset of the social and ecological ones. Please examine on slide 9 how the mentioned author thinks about the importance of each of the values underlining sustainable development. On slide 10, I have included several definitions of social sustainability. As you can see for the, from the examples included in the table, various authors are stressing different elements of sustainable development social dimension. I would just briefly say that there are authors who emphasize equity and democracy, others who look at the relations between nature and society, as well as relations from within the society with an emphasis on labor, others look at social capital or at integration of various disadvantaged groups and quality of life. I would point out to you that there are authors who talk about two main umbrella concepts of social sustainability. These are social equity, meaning how equitable is the distributive process in a society and sustainability of the communities, which means basically viability and health of the society in its entirety. I also want to share with you some of the most emphasized elements of social sustainability. These are equity and fair access to resources and services, means for daily subsistence, basic needs, jobs, income, and pride and sense of belonging to a community, social and cultural diversity perception. Uh, participation and the last mentioned ones are recently emerging topics. On slide 13, you can see that there are two sets of values or items associated with social sustainability. These are the traditional ones and the emerging ones. The traditional um, values of social uh, sustainability include basic needs, education, employment, human rights, while the emerging ones focus more on social mixing and cohesion, empowerment, participation and access social capital and well-being. On slide 14, you will see the features of social sustainability based on the perception of various authors. Please read them carefully and see whether they, they are similar or different from one author to the other. Because we are discussing about how social sustainability can be defined, we have to also talk about concepts which are overlapping with social sustainability. From the very beginning, I have to warn you that there is limited, limited literature dealing exclusively with social sustainability. Social dimension is not always addressed as an independent dimension. 
In an OECD study, it is pointed out that social sustainability often refers to the social implications of environmental policies. Somewhat more studied studies on concepts overlapping with social sustainability include social capital, participatory governance, and social exclusion. Please see on slide 16 as well as on the following slides. What are the elements that form social capital and social cohesion? And what's the connection with social sustainability? On slide 17, you have the same structure with suggested elements for social exclusion. One of the concepts which probably overlap the most with social sustainability is the social um, responsibility of corporations or businesses. Traditionally, CSR refers to businesses' responsibility to act ethically and to consider their impact on the community at large and does not necessarily encompass sustainability. Sustainability, on the other hand, is concerned with preserving resources and operating in a way that is conducive to long-term trading. Some say that a clear difference, therefore, is in the vision. CSR looks backwards at performance, typically over the last 12 months, while sustainability, although increasingly featured in dedicated reports, has a more preeminent forward-facing focus, which targets to secure the future for trading. We also have, when we are talking about overlapping concepts with social sustainability, we have philanthropy and the term of social businesses. Corporate philanthropy is mistaken many times for corporate responsibility, but it is not the same, or to be more accurate, it is just one dimension of CSR. Even though there is a debate which continues on the notion of corporate social responsibilities, most definitions do agree on the overall CSR, which covers doing good for workers, local society, as well as for the environment. Please examine slide 20 and the next slide in order to see how CSR overlaps with social sustainability. You have a lot of elements and um, concepts that deal with CSR because it's a topic that is very often found in the literature. As I mentioned before, an even newer concept is that of social businesses. It has to do with the creation of certain programs, such as the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh. Uh, the person who introduced this concept won the Nobel Prize for it. The Grameen Bank was established in order to provide microcredits to poor people as an alternative to conventional banking techniques. The aim behind this idea is to give opportunity to solve their social problem 
by encouraging them to be more entrepreneur. On slide 23, you have a brief description of the case study about how social businesses model emerged. Please read it carefully and try to consider why it is important in light of so, sustainability. On slide 24, you have the distinction between CSR and social businesses. Again, we are dealing with overlapping concepts that are relatively vague and the literature is not always helping us in order to draw the needed boundaries. As for conclusions, I will briefly point out that the social pillar within the sustainable development concept has gained more recognition in the recent years. We can say that a shift was observed from the so-called traditional social themes such as education, employment, toward emerging themes such as governance, sense of place, social capital and networks. I would say that in light of this change, the sustainability debate is often linked to urban environments and communities. This topic will be addressed during the next session that continues to provide critical remarks about definitions of social sustainability.